Ben Akers um, made a documentary called Steve. Uh, his childhood best friend five years ago, maybe six years ago now, um, took his life. And Ben um, decided the, the best way to deal with his grief was to, um, it was to make a documentary about suicide because he was quite shocked that when he started looking into it, how many men are taking their lives. And he couldn't believe that there's, it's every two hours in this country. Um, and so he decided to make a documentary and what I thought, we need to get the word out. We need to, people need to be talking about this. It's a bit of a taboo subject and no one talks about it really. And it's quite surprising how many people you meet and you talk, start to remember, they're like, yeah, my uncle took his life, my cousin, my friend, you know, it, it's, it's, I was quite shocked actually of how many people have, have got a story about it. And so that was Ben's aim to sort of bring it to the forefront more. So everybody actually fun enough, who was involved in that documentary ended up being a part of Talk Club. And the way I met Ben is I did the music for the film. So I met Ben, uh, our kids go to the same school, met him in the playground and uh, got chatting, what do you do, what do you do, I'm a documentary maker. And I was like, oh, okay, if you ever need some songs, yeah, give me a shout, I've got five albums. And he's like, all right, you cocky git. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, I, so I said, well, look, here's the links on Spotify. Going to have a listen to, you know, if there's anything there, let me know. And he came back the next day and, yeah, mate, this is great. Do you mind if I, you know, I said, yeah, use what you want. You know, I, they're for free. You can have them, you know, please, because I think it's a great call. So, please, so he ended up using eight songs in the, uh, in the film. And then after that, um, we got chatting and I, and he was sort of, I was sort of saying, what do you want to do? What are you doing next? And he said, well, actually, I'm thinking about um, setting up a talking group for men. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, look, I'll be interested. I said, because funnily enough, I'm, I'm, re I'm trained to be a therapist at the moment myself. So I said, it's something I'm very much interested in. Um, so we sat there and talked about it and uh, what we're going to do. And so I said, look, why don't we set up a group on Facebook first, a private group, and we'll invite men and we'll just see what happens and get people talking online first before we actually get them to do meetups. Um, so I set it up a year ago in 20th of april last year set it up and it's now got 1300 men um just under so uh it yeah it's just gone from strength to strength so from the facebook group we then right let's start up physical meetup groups that was the next goal so we set up the first one in bristol behind the bristol beer factory that was the very first one ever set up last august last july and we've now got i think at the moment before lockdown there was around 35 around the country that are meeting up every week um and it's still we still managed to move it online so the virtual groups are still happening online so it's still going so yeah that's how talk club began because of the steve documentary coming to talk club what i've heard a lot of men say is it's just uh, having that permission to speak and be open and honest and the, they, they they feel you know that masculinity of i can't do this at home I'd almost be judged or um, feel they can't open up. That's the key word. We, we'll, our, one of our mantras is open up, not manner. And it's true. It's they, they feel they've got permission to speak and not be judged because at Talk Club, it's we, the way we do it with the four rounds, which I can explain how it works in a minute, is everyone gets a chance to talk and, and there's no sort of jumping in and conversation. And for, for, for the men, it's very empowering that they're not being told what to do, which is men we do a lot, don't we? Oh, you should do this, fix this, do that. And they said that's one of the, 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 one of the, the positives they take away from Talk Club is they've got someone to go and, and have a bit, of a bit of a whinge, bit of a moan. Um, and women, I don't say women do whinging really well because that'd be really well, but women are really good at talking and they're really good at being honest and crying and opening up and saying how they really feel. And men are not good at it. And for us, it's not just about creating, getting men to talk. Actually, one of the key things is getting men to listen. The whole thing about Talk Club, our main slogan is, how are you out of 10? So it's all about how are you out of 10? So if I said to you now, Rich, what's your number now out of 10? 10 being the best, one being the worst. What number would you say you are right now? I'm probably a seven or an eight. Seven or eight. Okay. So that's how we start Talk Club. There's four rounds. We go around the room. We have a tennis ball. Whoever's got the ball is talking and no one else interrupts. And we say, the first question is, how are you out of 10? And what's your headline? What's going on for you this week? And so people go, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a six. You know, I've not had a good week. Me and the wife are arguing and, and I'm worried about money and I'm really stressed about this and that and that. 
and and then you go around the room and everyone takes their turn and so there's no sort of cross it's like that's your moment to speak second round is what are you grateful for what's what's working for you at the moment what are you what are you appreciating about life what is good so a bit of perspective a bit of balance and round three is what are you going to do this week to help your mental fitness because everyone focuses very much on on physical fitness we're focusing on mental fitness and that's what talk club is about is building mental fitness for men so what are you going to do this week to help your mental fitness and it's a broad aspect of some people are oh, more mindfulness yoga i'm going to go running more i'm going to drink less i've been drinking too much i'm going to lay off social media i've been on social media and that's causing anxiety i'm going to do it. so it's lots of different examples that everyone says uh, each week and in round four is simply what's your number now now you've been through this process what's your number and what you've taken away from this week's session and more often than not they either stay the same or the numbers go up and it does work i we do it every every day we check in on our little whatsapp group of the founders with our numbers and we always say yeah i'm this number but then we sort of say but i'm going to do this today and, I'm, uh, and I'm, i'll see how my numbers are later and it does work it makes you just sort of stop and think like you did then you were like actually if i said to you how are you you go yeah i'm all right yeah that's, that's the problem isn't it yeah yeah the default, default position default position whereas you, i've said to some friends are you all right and they're gone yeah I'm all, I'm all right and i've gone okay what's your number they're like oh probably a four mm. i'm like <laughs> Four, yeah. that's, is that is that is that all right for you like well actually Ooh. no job's really shit and i might be getting laid off and so it actually gets them opening up and talking because they're going no do you know what i'm not all right i'm i'm actually a four um and it's not about going cool, let's get you to a five come on let's think about something to get you to five but it's just them having that self-awareness of actually what number are you because we set talk uh, we try to say avoid seven because seven's the default i'm okay so people <laughs> go yeah i'm a set up you found me <laughs> yeah i'm a seven and so i will say to someone if they're a seven are you a six or an eight because that's a big difference between six and eight and and what the other thing we say is you know one man's four is another man's eight for me mm. i i'm generally around an eight and I, you know i generally that's my level is an eight but for some people being a four is good so yeah it's it's all it's very personal to how you measure your own numbers i think people are slowed down and like you said earlier actually i'm finding some benefits to this i've noticed a lot of people say do you know what my life was manic and do you know what? i wasn't coping and i was just holding on for dear life and i was coming to talk club because i knew i wasn't coping and what the, the lockdown's done is made people just get stay in the here and now which is which is which is what mindfulness does <laughs> mindfulness teaches us how to stay in the here and now breathe you're okay stay in here and now and and be calm and i think with the lockdown that's what a lot of us is teaching is to slow life life slow down and for some i've noticed on the on the talk club group the first post i posted after the lockdown i sort of said you know i'm, I'm an eight and you know everything's all right at the moment and i was surprised how many people were putting their number and how high the numbers were coming back everyone's like yeah i'm an eight you know i'm spending time with the kids and yeah, I've been furloughed, but I've got three months with the, with the at home with the family and, you know, and, and so there has been a real mixture. But what I'm noticing now, as we get further along this uh, in, in the lockdown, is I'm noticing more people are joining Talk Club, more people are talking on the Talk Club. People are coming to the virtual groups more because I think as the uncertainty grows, I think people are feeling a bit more anxious. So I think the sort of, hey we're at home let's get drunk every night is 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 starting to wane a little bit and it people are starting to go actually um you know when stats come out like they reckon 70 70 percent of the country are going to get this and only three percent have got it so far that's quite daunting and i think mm. for us we're seeing this long term for us with talk club we, we, we know in the next six months talk club's going to be vital because i think we're going to have a lot of men um, the wanting to come and join and talk. I think it's going to be because I, 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 I don't want to sort of you know be down on it, but I, I, I think you know su suicide numbers are very high in May and June, and anyway, and I think that they're they're going to be quite high again. So that's that's the the concern for us at Talk Club is is making sure that men have got somewhere to go. 
I'm thinking of engineers, touring engineers, tour managers. I mean, they're the people who are really here. What can they do uh, financially as well? As a musician, I can still play gigs. Um, I can still, I've been playing every Thursday night since lockdown. I've done more gigs in this lockdown than I've done in the last five years, I think. Um, but it's, I've, I've, I've been, yeah, I think the creative process for me, I, I feel quite creative. And, and fellow musicians I've spoken to I feel quite creative. Um, I think it's, it's, it's something we turn to as a way of our therapy and a way of dealing with, oh, okay, I'll write about this. So I think that balance of um, creativity is, um, is, is still high, um, like you said for some who aren't creative, but I think a lot of people, I know lots of friends have taken up piano, taken up painting, and it's brought a new creativity for them because they've gone, well, I've got time, I'm gonna learn the piano. Like I've always, it's almost one of those things of being, maybe being faced with that sort of mortality question, isn't it? That existential question of, you know, what have I done with my life? What do I want to do? I know, I always want to learn piano, I'll do it now. So there's lots of things, there's lots of things going on, I think. Lots of, lots of things going on. Uh, out there and the the musical aspect the charity song and and setting yeah. all that up that seems like a kind of natural progression but also a really good way of of focusing on the cause absolutely um like talk club every talk club has been completely organic and it's all grown naturally and the same with the song i didn't sit down and think i'm going to write a charity single <laughs> um I, I've always continued to write, even, even though I technically, you know, I'm not a professional musician anymore and I'm not a recording artist anymore. I've, I've got a new career in therapy. Um, I still would write songs because I love writing songs and I still, but I wasn't really gigging. Um, and I think from what I was seeing uh, at Talk Club, it really inspired me. And seeing the strength, seeing the men come forward, and honestly, I invited to come along to a talk club one night in Bristol to sit there and hear 10 men in the room bare their souls. There's nothing better than that. It's so empowering. And honestly, I feel welling up just thinking about, the, about it. It's incredible. It's just an incredible experience. Um, and I invite anyone to come and experience that and, and, and sit in that room and feel the energy and the love uh, coming from these people. And, and so I was inspired by what I was feeling, actually. And uh, just the, the thought of souls and that everybody's got a soul and seeing these men who, who needed help. And I was, and, and the idea of, of just, I was just thinking, yeah, just, my son said to me one day, he asked me what SOS meant. And I was explaining that it'd save our souls. And he's like, what's that? You know, and I'm like, well, we've all got one. And it's, and that's another term of, you know, we're, and I just thought, yeah, we do. We've all got a soul and we all need saving at some point. And, and that's where the idea to soul to save came from. And we've all got a soul to save. Um, we all could be vulnerable and weak at some point. And at some point we will need to be helped. And that's really the message of the song. It, some people interpret it in different ways, but that's the way I, uh, the, the, the approach I want to write the song. And that's why the first lyric of the song is, sometimes I just want to scream and shout, because that's it. It's, that's it in a nutshell. And that's the very first lyric I ever had for the song. I, I started writing and that just came to me and I was like, yeah, this is how I feel. Sometimes I just want to scream. Um, so writing the song itself was quite easy because it was truth. It was from my soul. It was from my heart. Um, and then once I'd written it, I, 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 I quickly recorded it on a, on a phone, a little demo and sent it to Ben, one of the co-founders and said, well, I've written a song. Well, what do you think? You know, um, you know, I might, I'm thinking I might release it as for Talk Club, maybe just a sort of little release. And he heard it and straight away was, was, was like, wow, this is really good, Gab. You know, this is a really good song. It's really powerful. And he said, you know, maybe we should really consider doing something with this. Um, and then it's one of those, by luck, you know, uh, my brother was um, out with a friend who, who runs a label and he played in the track and he was just blown away and was like, wow yeah i want to get involved this is amazing and so last november we had the meeting with the label to discuss putting the song out for talk club um and here we are six months later the song's out so it's been six months of planning and recording and, and prepping and and we just felt even though all this all this happened with covid we just felt like actually this is a positive thing to do let's keep going 
because we could have held off and waited and thought let's release a single in the summer and and we just thought no do you know what the time is now because i think the lyrics are so poignant now with what's going on in the world um and i've had a lot of people reach out and say that to me um who've lost family members so um it just felt like it was the right time to just continue and and keep moving forward And I said to all my, all my friends, everyone I meet, look, come once. If you just come once, because people go, oh, I'm all right. I don't need to go. Mm. No, you don't understand. This is the whole point of Talk Club. It's not, you're not going there because you're broken. You're going there to maintain your mental fitness. It's like you go to the gym on a Tuesday, don't you? Yeah, why? You don't go there to avoid a heart attack. You can go there to stay fit. Well, this is the same for us. It, you go, you're coming to Talk Club to stay mentally fit. And so it'd be great for you to come along and experience the room and, and what it's like to just, how simple it is. It's just four questions going around the room. And, and what the, the loveliest thing about it now is we've built a community and there's a community there. And what I loved the last time I went to a session, um, I, I, didn't, I haven't been going for a while because I've been helping set them up other places. And I went to the one in Bristol and there was 14 men and afterwards, they all went across the road to the pub together for a drink. And I just thought, that's amazing. That's, we've built a community here. We built, and two of the guys who came that night were like, yeah, I've got, I basically have got no friends. I've moved here. I don't know anyone. I heard about Talk Club. And now they've got 12 new friends and they're building this kit. And that might have been the reason they might have taken their life because of that. You know, they might have gone isolated, disconnected, right what's the point of living so you know I, I, we've already had two or three people come forward to us and say that they were planning on taking their life and because of talk club they haven't Brilliant. so i'm I, i'm actually willing up uh, saying absolutely that of course you would of course you would yeah it's it's amazing